This technique is going to help you seamlessly transition between maybe softer, slightly less busy recordings and your more intense, busier recordings. I'm going to show you the three different intensities that we're going to be achieving within this preset. Our first layer isn't very intense at all. But as we move through this distance pad, you'll start to hear that those drips get more and more intense. Let's jump into the pro side and I'll show you what's going on. So our water drips preset here is set up with a number of different granular engines. The granular engine is generating grains of different sizes to create a seamlessly loopable sound. I can then start to change the size of the grain, the rate of the grain, everything is all controllable within these different tabs. Now on this first engine here, you'll see that I've clicked autoplay and loop, which means that What's happening is this granular engine is just gonna keep looping and generating one grain at a time and looping that grain until I click stop. The second and third engine here are working slightly differently and this is where this interesting technique is happening. Within these two engines, I'm actually starting to play with the rate parameter over here. Now, instead of setting this just to loop one grain over and over again, what I've done is I've taken it off loop and I'm actually gonna use the rate to control what is being generated within this engine. Because I want it to sound busier, I'm actually going to start generating more grains at once so that they're looping and sort of crossfading over each other. Now, if we focus on this parameter here, the rate, and then also in the extras tab, the grain max, we can start to sort of create busier and busier sounds. Just to show you the extreme, as I increase this rate, have a look at these visuals and see what happens. If I start to increase the rate of how many of when these grains are being generated and also increasing how many grains are being generated at once, you can start to see I can create a busier sounding track from just one audio. Now let's set that back down to something that sounds a little bit more natural. I can also jump onto the random tab and start to mess around with these as well. So you can see that I can also mess with the start randomization, which means that across this track, it means it will randomly start at different points. Again, creating a little bit more variation and stopping you from hearing that it's looping, as well as the size of the grain. So the size of the grain is gonna change and it's gonna be random, which again means it's slightly, it sort of creates that variation as it's looping. So you won't hear the same thing happening over and over again. I can also mess around the pitch if I want to, the width, um, and also the rate as well. Now you can see we've also used the same technique in this third engine as well, which is being controlled at the top of this pad. So as I move into this top section, we're hearing this engine here. And again, we've created this busyness from this audio track just simply by using the rate and the, um, the maximum amount of grains that are being generated at once. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this first layer. This engine at the top here has been assigned to the bottom layer of this distance pad. This distance pad works in three different sections. So you've got the bottom section here, the middle sections here, and the top section is here, which means you can move through three different types of audio in one movement. Now this first layer is pretty easy. All you have to do is just drag and drop your first recording, your least intense, least busy, into this engine and click play. Have a mess around with the size, have a mess around with your different parameters of your start and your size randomization. The top layer, again, is pretty easy because we've got that fast recording. All we need to do is drag and drop it into our engine and then assign that to the top intense layer. As you can see, I've got that here, tab one, core engine two, granular level, which means you'll only hear these in those sections. So if you hear the top level, I'm not gonna hear it until I reach the top. That middle level is the tricky one because we need to now transition between the slow recording that we've got and the fast recording that we've got. So here's the trick. I'm then gonna load in the slow recording into this second engine. So it's the same recording as we've got on engine one, but instead of setting it as autoplay and loop, we're gonna take that off and we're gonna use the rate. I'm gonna set my rate so that it's generating enough busyness that doesn't jump out of nowhere. And then I'm also gonna have a look at the grain max just to make sure that I'm not generating too much noise too quickly. It means that as I move from this first layer into the second layer, it kind of sounds like two different recordings. It sounds like I've created or recorded this middle layer. Now, the last thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna assign the rate in these engines to the movement that we have on this distance pad, which means as we move through that distance pad in this movement, 
the rate is going to change as we move through those sections. So it just helps us create that little bit more seamless movement between those three sections. So on this engine here, I'm going to take the rate and I'm going to assign it to the middle layer here. All you have to do is drag and drop. If I click onto here, you can see that it's been assigned. Tab one, core engine one, rate. And all that means is that as we go through this middle section, that rate is going to increase slightly. So as you can see, pretty quickly using Creo Studio, I'm able to create three distinct intensity levels using only two recordings. It means less time aimlessly scrolling through different libraries, trying to desperately find the perfect recording to match these two intensities. Just drag and drop your different samples into Creo Studio and it'll do it for you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that was useful and yeah, see you next time.